Hi guys and welcome to Simply Scuba. Now your dry suit is a very important piece of kit and pretty much essential if you're diving in the UK. But they come in lots of different shapes and styles, they have all sorts of features, so let's take a closer look at dry suits. Neoprene. Neoprene dry suits are thicker, they tend to use compressed neoprene which is much better at keeping you warm just by the material itself. They're a bit tougher than membrane suits so they can take a bit more abuse but they're a bit heavier and they require a bit more lead to get down. Membrane. Membrane dry suits are just a simple shell that keep the water out and the air inside. They're very thin so they don't adjust buoyancy at depth and you can control how warm you are by the undersuit underneath. They're very quick to repair, which makes them great for all sorts of diver. Front entry. Front entry dry suits are quick and easy to get in all by yourself. They have a diagonal zip that goes from your hip up over your shoulder, so you can get into the suit and zip yourself up without a buddy. Back entry. Back entry zips tend to have a long zipper across the back of your shoulders. They're easy to get in and out of, but you do need a buddy to help you zip yourself in and unzip yourself after a dive. You get a large opening to climb into, but you always need that buddy to help you get out. Latex seals. Latex seals are the golden standard. They're pretty tough and flexible and very cheap to replace. But you do have to be careful not to pull them too much so they don't tear. Neoprene seals. Neoprene seals are a bit thicker than latex seals. They're a little bit tougher on the outside as well, but on the inside they have this glide skin material, which is very effective at creating a seal, but you do have to be careful not to pull on it too much so it doesn't rip or tear. Silicone seals. Silicone seals are one of the newest on the market. They're very flexible compared to latex or neoprene, but nothing sticks to it. So you do have to use a ring system. Chest inflation valve. Your chest valve is how you get air into your dry suit. They typically have a nozzle that's exactly the same as your BCD. They tend to rotate as well, and they have a button to inflate. Auto dump. Auto shoulder dumps allow excess gas to escape out of your dry suit. You can tighten them and loosen the valve as well. And if you need to dump some air, you can bash it by pushing the button. This opens the valve and just allows gas to escape. Cuff dump. Cuff dumps are a more simple one-way valve that just allow any gas inside the suit to vent out. So all you have to do is lift your left arm up to vent gas. This is great, very quick and easy, but when you're on the surface, they can let some water in. Thigh pockets. Thigh pockets are a handy storage space to keep all of your tools and essentials to hand. They typically have a pocket on the front and then the large cavernous pockets with attachment points on the inside that act as anchors so you can attach lanyards onto them. Velcro closure is very common, very handy piece of equipment to have on your dry suit. Warm neck. Warm necks are a simple piece of neoprene that covers your latex or silicone neck seal and they trap a layer of water just in front of it to keep it warm. It also acts to protect your neck seal, you have plenty of adjustment and even drainage at the bottom so water doesn't collect inside. Boots. Most dry suits at the bottom have integrated boots. You want to make sure that they fit perfectly, they're nice and comfortable, and that they have a tough sole, because you're going to be walking around and you don't want it to wear out too quick. Lots of protection on the top and the heel, and often a fin notch is essential to keep your fins in position. Braces. Braces on the inside of the suit hold it up whilst you're walking around on the surface. You don't want to wear the top half if it's a warm day, so you can take the top half of your dry suit and let that hang down, but the rest of the suit will just drop. So your braces will hold it up and stop it from dropping down to the floor. Built-in undersuit. Built-in undersuits are exclusive to the D1 Hybrid right now. They have a two-layer section on the inside that traps a layer of air all over your body, ensuring that you're nice and warm, you don't get any cold spots, and you have nice buoyancy. Brass zip. 
bra zippers are very traditional they've been around for years and they are very well trusted they can be quite stiff so they do require a bit of lubrication just to move that zipper but once it's done up it's a very strong seal you do have to be careful not to bend them too much as they can break plastic zip plastic zippers are newer to the market they're much easier to zip and unzip and they're a lot more flexible compared to their brass counterparts telescopic torso Telescopic torsos are more commonly found on front entry suits to give you more space to get in and out of the suit, but they do allow you to adjust for your height perfectly. By allowing the suits to fold in on itself and with a crotch strap to hold the bottom of the suit in, they make it very comfortable and custom made to your height. Cuff guard. Cuff guards act much the same as your neoprene warm neck by adding a simple layer of neoprene that covers the majority of your cuff seal to protect it from abrasion. You can also layer up gloves and protect your seal underneath. Knee pads. Knee pads protect your dry suit from the usual wear and tear of scuba diving. They typically cover most of your knee and down the front of your lower leg as well. Secondary zip. Secondary zips are very simple zippers that cover your main dry zip. They protect it from the usual wear and tear and abrasions whilst diving and just act as a secondary guard. So that was a quick look at dry suits. They of course come in lots of different qualities, but that was a quick look at their different features. Let us know which dry suit you use below. Thanks for watching and safe diving. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.